this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Rain, that's messed up what I had planned for today. And I'm hoping that tomorrow the weather's going to be better. So today moves to tomorrow, tomorrow moves to today. Does that make sense? Well, it did. <laughs> it did when it left here, whether it was the same when it came out. So today is mass watering day. Um, now the idea of doing the one of each as I went round watering has been done. Now I, I thought about today, I could go round and do one of each again but not pick on the same plants. Unfortunately that will mean hassle basically because I'll need to know what I did last time and avoid it this time round. So I'm not doing that. But what I will do is as I go round I will pick up on anything interesting as individual plants. And when I get to the holy clay pots, the cattleyas that are potted, um, I will stop and we'll have a look over those and see how they're going into the rest of winter. Bearing in mind, as far as winter is concerned, it's half over. You know, we've, we've done over half of it now. I mean, in a few weeks' time, people will be saying, oh, it's getting lighter in the mornings, isn't it? Yeah, well, yes, it is happens every year and every year we mention it. <laughs> we do, do daft things in this country as regards weather and things going on that happen every year without fail but we still have to talk about it. Anyway, um, for the future I've booked a ticket for me. I haven't tried to get anybody else involved because it, it would get complicated but um, this sort of time last year, I was letting you know that I was going on a minibus trip to McBean's and the Mathers Foundation. Um, well, I doubt if I'd ever be allowed back in McBean's. Um, not that I would want to. And that was organised by an orchid society that I'm no longer a member of. And trying to organise a minibus trip for the orchid society I am a member of would not be worth even taking the breath to say it because it, it wouldn't take place. So what I've done is I've booked me <laughs> and I'll be going to the Mathers Foundation early February as a day out and um, it's going to take a bit of organising because I haven't told anybody yet but it's on the same day as an Orchid Society meeting of which I am the treasurer. So that needs a bit of organising because <laughs> I won't be there and somebody else will need to stand in and they will need the stuff that I have as treasurer in my possession. So I'll get that sorted. But yeah, it's a, it's a Saturday, as I said, so it coincides with the meeting, unfortunately. Um, it's all very well, but you can't be expected to attend every single meeting ever, you know. So I'm taking a day off. And the Mathers Foundation specialise in the odontoglossum type oncidiums species and hybrids and have a national collection, Cymbidiums, um, Miltoniopsis and Pleonies. Um, I haven't got a great interest in those, I must admit, but the other three, yes. And allegedly, I have heard rumours <laughs> from the dark web, I've heard rumours that there will be some plants for sale. Therefore, I have booked in on the first available open day of the year to get first crack at whatever's on offer. Now, the last time when I went to McBean's, they didn't realise that as an orchid society visiting an orchid nursery, we'd actually want to buy things. That's a little naive to say the least. But anyway, um, their cheapest plant was £70. And that was for a scrappy little piece in a pot. Now, okay, you, you're looking at rarity and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, fair, fair enough. But um, I wasn't prepared to pay that amount of money for that type of orchid. If that had been a reasonable sized plant and rare, whatever, then I may have. But not at that price. Um, but I don't know what they're going to be selling and what they will be selling them for but the rumour has it that some of the crosses that they've done, that they have excess plants, which they know they, they don't need to keep that many 
to maintain that cross for the future, if you see what I mean. So there may be some plants just there. Um, we will see when we get there. And obviously I'll film the nursery, um, you know, things in bloom, stuff like that. It's quite a high-tech nursery, basically. I mean, let's put it this way. They have three entirely self-contained heating systems as backups in case the first one fails. <laughs> I think it goes from electric to gas to oil. <laughs> and obviously all three can't fail at the same time. You know, hell would freeze over before that happens. So, well prepared. So, yeah, that's a nice day out. That will probably, in fact, it will be the first day out of the year, I would imagine, being, you know, early in February. I won't be doing much else. Um, anyway, that's to come. Just thought I'd let you know. Um, we look forward to that. That, that will be good. And, uh, a bit of arranging and faff to do um, because of it coinciding with a meeting, but I can get that sorted. No big deal. Um, right, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to water. I will stop if I find something worth stopping for. Otherwise, I will stop when I get to the holy clay pots, which at that stage I'm nearly finished anyway, and the little bit that's left over may wait till tomorrow. Last time I attempted to do it all in one go, I started getting um, I started getting clumsy towards the end because I'd had enough, you know, because that does incorporate the mounts as well. Whereas, quite honestly, today, to reduce the load, it would be easier for me if I just whizzed round the mounts with the sprayer and water the pots. But the pots haven't been done for, I think it's nearly 12 days now, so there'll be some of them will be gasping for some moisture. So, let's crack on. See how we go. Well, Carol's in for a treat. The Delicatum has a spike. And looking at the size of the swellings on some of the other nubbins, I think this might have a few, few more spikes to come. Not sure. Um, but that is the first spike it's ever produced. And um, to all intents and purposes, there's no reason why that should fail between now and it getting to Carol. Um, I mean, this is, <laughs> as a plant, it's growing on quite nicely. It's got a mass of roots and... Um, you know, they will stay intact even though it's going bare-rooted. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you that. Um, <laughs> just because it's in spike doesn't change my mind because the Kingianum type blooms don't do a lot for me. But the beauty of the Delicatum is the fragrance is intense and powerful and it is capable of going right down to zero in the winter time providing it's dry. So it will take you know, real cold temperatures. And to some extent it needs them or it won't bloom. So it just goes to show that it is colder because there's no reason why these shouldn't have bloomed in previous years, but it wasn't as cold as it is this year in here. So I think the evidence is reasonable that it needs to chill down <laughs> with the bright light, not just, you know, chilled and shady probably wouldn't do it. Anyway, uh, that was a novelty. That seems like all the good stuff's going to Carol. No, not the big one, the little one. <laughs> That's my Dendrobium moniliform. And it seriously looks like it could be in bud if they don't blast. But more importantly, there's at least four new growths coming up there. Now this hasn't got a very good root system, but if those new growths can push on, it's a cool grower. You know, so it, it should be okay here. Um, yeah, so if it produces some more roots, um, should be successful. I had one of these a long time ago, and it, it was on a mount, and um, it just failed. You know, did okay for a while, and then went down. And that seems to happen to a lot of my dendrobiums that are cooler growers round the other place in the heat. They survived it for a while, but eventually it just took them down. There's quite a few were on that list. Now I've got the opposite. <laughs> yeah. They were doing okay around the other place and now they're not round here. But uh, there will be a, a balance and equilibrium will be found. Okay, I didn't find anything else, so I'm going to move on to the catlias now. This is the potted catlias, those that are left. And um, these are the ones off the top shelf. 
there's a one two there's a couple on a, on the next shelf down as well that we'll have a look at when I've done with these um, I don't want to interrupt my watering by much so what I want to do with these is have a look at them and then I'll put them back <laughs> so I'll be instead of picking them up to look at them I'm going to take them away to look at them I know what I mean right they've all been watered so they can just go back where they go on the shelf now this is my um, only red catlia nice upright grower it's maturing a growth here with a double sheath it always has a double sheath and there's a secondary new growth coming in here that's going incredibly slowly because of the low temperatures but this one has not lost a leaf so this one looks like it will put up with the cooler temperatures albeit slowed right down and this is the um, Cyan Yu Red Pearl Red Dragonfly. So we don't need to guess the colour of that one, do we? You won't want to go out, it's raining. Alright, you will want to go out then. <laughs> the cats now go out in the rain, but they don't really go out and do what they're supposed to be doing outside. What they do is the bench here has got my moss trays on. So effectively underneath the bench is out of the rain and um, they've decided they like to drink that water in the bottom of the <laughs> bag holder. Oh, cat's too fast. It's got lovely fresh water in their bowl, but no, they'd rather go and drink that. Stupid things. Anyway, so that's the, uh, that's the red one and that lives up there on the end. And look what I've just spotted. How can you not see that? That's a big one too. Well, you can go out there where you can't do, well, you can't do any harm in here anymore. Oh, we do without that. Right, now this large strappy Catlia is not doing so well in the cool. It matured this growth, latest growth, put up a massive sheath and had buds. And the buds rotted on the inside of the sheath. So they never made it. Now, if that's what it's going to do on subsequent new growths because of the cold, then it doesn't get to stay, basically. Um, this is a relatively recent one as well. Um, Taiwan Good Life Big Wilson. It's an RLC. So Rancolalia Catlia or something like that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's not growing at the moment. It matured that new growth and um, there's no sign of new, more new growths coming. If it can push on a new growth in the, in the warmer weather and mature it early enough and bloom, it, it might do okay. But at the moment, it's, it's stalling, basically. Right, this is my Lelia Anceps, minus one spike, because it touched the glass. The two spikes that are left will probably make it. There are signs of buds in there. So as long as it keeps pushing on, Desperately need to repot. Um, that actually got some cocoa husk mixed in with it when it was last repotted. So, desperately needs doing, but we'll wait till after the spikes are finished and we get signs of new growths coming. So, that one lives up there. And then this is my um, Lelia purpurata, variety striata. And this is very, very, very slowly pushing this growth on. And there's some root activity as a consequence of that new growth. There's two plants in there. In there. The other one's not doing so good. But um, this particular piece should grow on okay now. Um, oh, it's badly desiccated. You know, it's spent a long time with no roots and the bulbs have completely desiccated. It's got no strength left in it at all. Um, however, if it can mature this growth and then grow another one, we, we might be getting somewhere. But not doing very well, that one. But not dead yet. <laughs> Don't forget to add that bit in. And then the other one that lives up here, apart from that, uh, that's a, a sherry baby. Um, that lives up on this shelf because of the height of the spike. I haven't got another shelf I can put it on that's got any room on. Now this is my apple blossom, Ivanagara apple blossom. It's now called something else, don't care. This is what it's been known as 
since it was first a first cross appeared on the market and took everybody by storm because of the really really good fragrance and the blend of colors everybody fell in love with this one there's been a lot more additions to this they're still called apple blossom but then they'd have something in quotes after various ones the latest growth on here is maturing it hasn't fully matured yet and when it does it should bloom um, and then it, again this is another one desperately needs a repot so uh, we will get that organized at some point right so that's the ones on the top shelf i'll break off now until i've got there's a few on the lower shelf that we'll have a look at when i get to them um, but as far as watering goes i've just got this bit to do now it doesn't look like much but derek's plants around the back there there's a lot of those so uh, anyway i'll crack on okay the last three then um, this little one here looks like a miserable failure but it isn't really because this growth is okay and it's growing some roots so it's got no backup it's got no green leaves left these have dropped and these have yellowed so these will drop soon leaving just the new growth but I think given that if that matures then it'll be okay if it remains small and doesn't get to full size then it will need another new growth to mature to recover properly but it's growing some roots so it's going to make it well probably the cold could still take it right this one's got no tag did that one have a tag no it didn't <laughs> and this one hasn't either um, now again this one is sort of okay um, it's got a new growth pushing on here um, it's grown quite a few new roots I'm being very very observant of this cane this is the previous new growth and it's discolored at the base as is this one so I keep feeling these to see if they're going soft if there's any sign of softness near the base then it's rot and if it's rot at the base it can get into the whole rhizome and take the whole plant down so I'm not sure whether that one's going to be good or not but at least it's trying so uh, that's that one no ID we have to wait for these if they recover I'll worry about what they are after that point when they've recovered otherwise it's not worth bothering one and then this one's doing okay but then this isn't one of my old cattleyas this was one I got when can't remember um, and it has got a tag <laughs> well you can try saying that Orion Catleanthe and it's Varut Star Trek not Star Trek Star Trek and the latest new growth has pushed on nicely all the leaves are green it's growing and it is still growing a decent root system so that one will be fine all right so that's those right now i've got a big decision to make here i've just taken two late two leaves off of this um renanthera and now that i can see clearly the next two are going to go and possibly the next one so this one is not at all happy in these temperatures so that is going to go to carol rather than lose it completely which is what will happen if it stays here looking at the what's going on it's creeping up losing leaves slowly but surely and these have already started to go this one however its oldest leaf is going and the rest are fine now when i bought these i remember i bought one that was specifically a cooler grower and although i've lost the tags i suspect that is the one so that may be the only one i keep because this one is not doing well and we still got another couple of months of cold yet so you know that that has all the hallmarks of losing its leaves slowly but surely until there's no plant left so we'll uh, we'll chuck that one in the box as well right i've finished watering now except for the three um cymbidiums and i always leave them till last because one of them's oh, i can show you it's climbing out of the pot starting to get mold on the surface there too it's down to be repotted and it will be soon so you know that will come off but um basically this one and that one that i've just shown you chuck dirt out when i water them so 
you know, that completely contaminates my water with a lot of the peat washes off and I get really manky water that I wouldn't want to use on other plants. Um, so basically I start with this one that's in my media. I, I repotted this one. And then I do this one that's in unknown media, but it came from the Mathers Foundation. So, um, and while I'm there, I shall quiz, well, either Jim or David Mathers on the colour of this one. I'll make sure... Oh, I'd have to use my phone, wouldn't I? Uh, maybe I won't be able to do it. Um, unless there's somebody else there with a good phone that I can... No, it won't bother. But what I was going to say was um, I'll ask why the colour can be so dramatically different on cymbidiums. What do they believe the factors are that could make a lovely copper coloured cymbidium turn out faded like that? Let's see if we can get a nice clear answer to exactly what it is. It's highly likely to be temperature and light levels when the spike is developing up towards when the buds start to form. It's highly likely to be that. But I'd rather have it confirmed by the experts. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, thanks for dropping by and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of people have mentioned that some of my some of my content doesn't seem to be including orchids very often. Well, I've said before, it is a bit of a quiet time. <laughs> but hopefully we can get back into at least including orchids as part of the, uh, part of the content. And um, as I said, I might do some spotlights and various things. Um, we shall see. And uh, we will have to decide what the project, the 2023 Project Orchids, are actually going to look like in the not too distant future, because I want to start them in February. And February is going to creep up on me. <laughs> I'll have to, if I turn me back it'll be there so we'll have to get cracking on uh, deciding on that and what I'll do is I'll put my ideas out like an outline plan which I've already done once but we'll we'll do it again with a bit more detail and then you know we'll decide based on comments coming in under that video and then uh, then I'll do it, then I'll explain exactly how it's gonna be and um, yeah I'll see you next time thanks for dropping by